Hello everyone. In this session, we will learn about the third type of adjusting entries, which is accrued expenses. Think of accrued expenses like borrowing a book from the library. You have started to read that book and you have not returned it by the due date. Why not? You are enjoying the book and you want to finish it. However, you have not paid any late fees yet because you will pay the late fees when you actually return the book. In a similar fashion, accrued expenses are costs that occurred, that happened. You are late on that book, but the company have not paid it yet or recorded that expense. So even though no cash has been exchanged, it's crucial to record these expenses if you are using accrual accounting to show the expense on the financial statements. So we record an expense, but we did not pay it in cash. So what's going to happen? We have to record a corresponding liability. For example, if we are talking about our late fees for the library, so you'll have late fees expense, you will have late fees liability. So the expense is recorded, have not been paid yet. In this session, we will dive deeper into accrued expenses. We would look at the mechanics, at the journal entries. Also, we would look at a multiple choice questions from Farhat Lectures. As always, I'm going to invite you to visit Farhat Lectures for additional resources. Let's dive deeper into accrued expenses slash liabilities. Always, when I, when I say accrued expenses, you can also say accrued liabilities because they complete each other. And I will explain why as we are working the example. But let's define first accrued expenses. What are accrued expenses? Remember, expense is a cost. But this cost is accrued. So those accrued expenses are costs that a company or an entity incurred. So the cost did happen, but has not yet paid or recorded in the financial statement at the end of the accounting period. In my class, I always give this example. I say, let's assume today is, let's assume today is March 1st. And you have to pay your rent March 1st, you have to pay your rent. Now, if you did pay your rent from, an, from a journal entry perspective, you debit rent expense for the sake of simplicity, $1,000, and you credit cash, $1,000. And that's it, it's done. I paid my rent for March, rent expense is history. Let's switch the scenario and assume you cannot pay your rent on March 1st. So rent is due, you cannot pay your rent. Oh, my question to you is this, do you still have rent expense? And the answer is yes, unless you move out and you break the contract and the landlord okay with it. But the assumption is you are saying in that place, you have rent expense. So you have to record the rent expense of $1,000. Well, you don't have the cash. Well, if you don't have the cash, you're not going to credit cash because you don't have the cash. Your problem would have been sold, solved. What you will do is you will credit rent payable a thousand dollar so what happened is rather than paying cash the expense became a liability and this is why i say if you said accrued expenses it's the same thing as accrued liabilities because you are accruing a liability so these expenses are recognized in the period they are incurred regardless of when the payment is made now for my march expense i may not pay it till june when i have the money or april or some other time nevertheless the expense was recorded in March. And this adheres to the matching principle because I need to record my expense in March for the month of March. I don't record it when I pay it, I record it when it incurred. It helped me generate revenues in the month of March. So let me show you another picture of this. So let's assume you have $1,000 of expenses. Well, you are going to debit expenses $1,000. Okay, expense will go up. Well. What we learned up to this point, most of the time, we debit an expense and we credit cash. So debit an expense, credit cash, and we are done. What happened if you don't have the money to pay it or if you're going to debit the expense, what happens sometime is you're going to have to credit a payable. So if you debited rent expense, you credit rent payable. If you debited tax expense, you might have to credit tax payable. So what you do, if you don't pay the expense, the expense becomes a payable. Now, you know, for example, you could debit 1,000 of expense, you have 300 in cash, 
and the remainder will be 700. The total has to be 1,000. I just, you know, it doesn't have to be either or, but a combination of this. But the idea is, if you paid the expense in cash, you're done. If you accrue the expense, this is called accrued expense. And sometime again, you pay some and you accrue the rest. What are some examples of accrued expenses? Salaries and wages. So when the employee works for you and you don't pay them immediately, you owe them money, that's an accrued expense. Interest on loan that has accumulated but not yet paid. If you have a loan in the bank, what's going to happen? At the end of the accounting period, interest of, uh, on that loan accrued. It means it added up, but you don't have to pay the interest until sometime in the future, until a month or two later. Well, when you prepare the financial statements, you have to compute how much interest accumulated, accrued up to that point, and do what? Debit, interest, expense, credit, interest payable, because you're not paying it now, but you have to record the expense. Utilities consumed, but not yet billed. So you, you, you consumed some utilities, you did not you were not built for it, but you know you have an expense. Taxes owed but not yet paid. Frankly, any other expense. Any expense, any expense that was incurred. Incurred means it happened, but you have not paid it yet. It is an accrued expense or what I told you, accrued liability. The same thing. Let's illustrate this concept using our trial balance for Farhat lectures. At this point, I have 500 of salaries expense. Okay, let's see what's going to happen. Farhat Lectures pay its employees $100 per day, totaling $500 for a five-day work week. The employees are paid each Friday. So here's what's going to happen. This is a week. This is Friday. On Friday, Farhat Lectures will debit salary expense or wage expense, and they will credit cash. How much? 500. And indeed, if you look at my trial balance, I do have 500 of salaries expense. What does that mean? It means for this particular year, I only paid for one week. Last time, employees were paid, not pay, were paid on Friday, December 26. That was the first and last time for that year. Assume December 31st falls on a Wednesday. So this is this Friday was 1226. And the following week, the year ends on Wednesday, and this is December 31st. The employee came back to work, work Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. They worked for three days. Now, I will not pay them till January 2nd. Well, Three days, Monday the 29th, Tuesday the 30th, Wednesday the 31st, salaries are owed. It means they worked for me those three days, one, two, three, and I owe them. How much do I owe them? I owe the employees $300. What does that mean? It means I have to record an additional to my $500. I have an additional $300 for those three days. Why? Because those salaries are accrued. Accrued means they happen, but I did not pay for it yet. Therefore, what I would do, I will debit salaries expense 300. Now, my salaries expense for the year is 800. Well, I'm not going to pay them till January. What do I do? I credit salaries payable. It means now I debit, sal I debit salaries expense 300 credit salaries payable. Now, what I do on my trial balance, I have salaries payable as an exp as a liability and I'm going to record there 300 because if I added 300 to the debit I have to add 300 to the credit and salaries payable will be placed here under liabilities so what did I do I recorded an expense which is an income statement account and I recorded something on the balance sheet which is a liability remember every adjustment will affect both if accrued expenses adjustments are not made if they were not made what would happen? Well, my liabilities are underreported by 300 and my expenses are underreported by 300. So I will have less expenses and less liabilities. And yes, if you don't, if you don't book those accrued expenses slash liabilities, well, you can hide expenses and liabilities, but that's not what you're supposed to do. Now let's fast forward till January 2nd. What would happen on January 2nd? January 
Second, Farhat will cut the paycheck or transfer the money to the employees. How much they will transfer? 500. Well, let's look at the journal entry. On January 2nd, I will have to credit cash $500. I have to pay $500 for hat lectures. Here's what's going to happen. Of this $500, I already recorded 300 of it as an expense. So of this 500, 300 as an expense. But this expense took place in year X5. What does that mean? It means in year X5, it means the expense are, is recorded. So what do I need to do? For the first 300, it goes against my liability. So remember, I have a liability called salaries payable. I remove the liability. Debited salaries payable, credit salaries payable, it's done. Then what I would do for the 200 debit, I will debit the expense for the days of Thursday. You remember Thursday and Friday they earn an additional $200, salaries expense 200 What does that mean? It means in total, I paid $500 in cash, of which $300 was recorded in year X5, and $200 was recorded in year X6. Now, we will see later that the company will have the option to do what's called a reverse entry. What's a reverse entry? It means on January 1st, they can reverse this entry. We'll talk about that later when we look at reversing entries. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. A company incurs utility expense throughout December but received the bill in January. According to the matching principle, what's the appropriate accounting treatment for the expense for the December financial statement? So how should the company account for the utilities expense incurred in December but billed in January and it was paid in March? Kind of make it a little bit more interesting. What do we do? Well, if the expense was incurred in December, we have to record the expense in December according to the matching principle. But hold on a second. You're telling me I did not receive the bill till January. How would I know how much do I owe? Well, guess what? You can estimate. So you could look at your last year bill. And if your last year bill is, let's assume, $200 and the price of the utility expense, the cost of utility expense is the same. Well, it should be around $200. If it was $200 and the price of utilities went up by 10%, then you should say it's around 220. Let's assume it's $200 and you increase your consumption by 5% and the price increased by 10%, you make the adjustment to estimate the amount. So simply put, the point is you have to record the expense in December. Do you record it in January? No. When the bill is received, that's irrelevant for me. Record the expense in December as it's incurred? Yes. And this is the matching principle. And accrued expenses, remember, when we talked about adjustments, we said the purpose of the adjustments to make sure we are complying with the matching principle. And this is a classic example of it. Record the expense in the proper period. Do not record the expense until the payment is made. No, this is the cash method. Record the expense when the utility company sends a reminder. Yeah, that would be nice, but yeah, that's not that's not how it works. You record the expense in the month it was incurred. The expense took place in December. I don't know. I don't have the bill. I don't know exactly how much the amount you can estimate. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures. Look at additional resources, multiple choice, recordings. Remember, adjustments, you have prepaid, you have unearned, accrued expense, accrued revenues. You need to be very familiar with those topics. Farhat Lectures can help. Invest in yourself. Good luck and stay safe.